This video is sponsored by The Ridge. Get 10% off your order and free worldwide shipping by visiting ridge.com slash nameexplain and use the code nameexplain. Here at Name Explain, we spend most of our time looking into three kinds of names. Names that are, as in names that are currently on our planet. Names that have been, as in previous names things used to have. And sometimes we look into names that could be, as in names something may possibly have in the future. Okay, so we didn't actually do that last one too much, but still, things work better in sets of threes. Today, however, we are unearthing a secret fourth kind of name. Names that could have been. It's very rare that the initial name someone had in mind for something gets used when that thing is released to the public. Products and brands usually have a ton of different names workshop behind the scenes. Whole groups of people employed to simply pick a name in some cases. Companies are always looking for that killer name that's unique, easy to remember, and straight to the point. And usually that perfect name isn't the one they come up with first, meaning a ton of rejected names are thrown to the side. These reject names are intended to stay locked away, with the hope that the public may never know about them. That might be a tad too hyperbolic. Most companies aren't that shy about their prototype names, and often share them in interviews and such, and from behind the scenes snippets like this, name related fun pieces of trivia born into the world. And is there anything we love more here at Name Explain than one fun trivia and names cross paths? And what I also love about these rejected names is the window into an alternate reality that they've created. Hearing that something was almost called something else entirely conjured up this image in my head of living in this world where such a well known name doesn't exist and another name is in its place instead. Okay, so it's not the most exciting alternate history, I guess, but I get a kick out of it. So today, let's have a look at some things that almost had completely different names, and of course why they ended up with the names they have now. Though what exactly do I mean by things? Because that's a pretty vague word. Well by things I mean pretty much anything really. We'll be looking at things from popular products, huge companies, to pieces of media. I'm not really the biggest fan of using the word thing, but sometimes no other word fits the bill better. And in this video on the whole, I want to focus on names that were never officially used in public. Not so much old names for things for a short time when they were first created. In example, the Nintendo Wii's original name Revolution isn't on this list, as that was a name used in public at the time, and it was quite openly just a temporary name. A console name we will be talking about however is Xbox. While this name is just as synonymous with gaming now as Nintendo and Playstation, things could have been incredibly different. The Xbox is a product of Microsoft, so a lot of time and money went into its development, and of course a lot of time was put into what it should be called. In an interview, one of the key figures behind the console's creation shared a plethora of weird names that people hired to think of a name came up with. Many of these were acronyms such as FACE meaning Full Action Center, MIND meaning Microsoft Interactive Network Device, MAX meaning Microsoft Microsoft Action Experience, and even just TSO meaning 360, which is something they would kind of come back to with their next console. There were apparently other names suggested, but apparently they were so awful they weren't even written down for safekeeping. All of these names were rejected and Microsoft went back to using their project name for the device, the DirectX box. Microsoft's collection of software for dealing with gaming is called DirectX, so their console was called the DirectX box, as it was a box that used DirectX. Eventually this prototype name was shortened to just Xbox, and it is stuck around to this very day. The hugely successful coffee store chain Starbucks almost had a completely different name too. The co-founder of the chain, Gordon Bowker, has talked in the past about the ideas they had for names. The two names that came closest to being official were Cargo House and Pequod. I'm not sure where exactly Cargo House came from, but Pequod is also the name of Captain Ahab ship in Moby Dick. Clearly, Balco was a fan of the novel as it came into play of the final name the coffee chain settled on. These initial names were rejected by their brand consultant, however. He insisted that the user words starting with ST, as apparently words starting with these two letters sound more powerful, or some kind of advertising mumbo jumbo crap like this. So the team started brainstorming name ideas, which led to their brand consultant sharing an 1800s map of Mount Rainer and the Cascades. On the map was the mining town of Starboss, which reminded Balka of the first mate of the Peacod in Moby Dick, Starbuck. With this name starting with ST and Balka's love of the book, the name was chosen for the coffee chain, and an extra S was added at the end to make it sound more conversational and natural. Thus, Starbucks was born. Now, for this one, there's quite the chance you're looking at one of these right now. I'm, of course, talking about Apple's most valuable asset, the iPhone. It's crazy to think that this simple name wasn't Apple's first choice. It just fits in so nicely with the rest of their product line. But yes, this name may never have been. Ken Segal was the former lead for advertising at Apple, and he shared not one, but four names that Apple toyed with naming their new device. One of these being the Telepod, which blends telephone and pod, which was already in use by Apple with their hugely popular at the time iPods. Another was Moby, which was a cute shortening of mobile which was apparently full of personality. Tripod was also considered, 
as it's a play on iPod and emphasizes the phone's three key features of being a phone, iPod, and internet communications device. This combination of these three things might seem archaic now, but it was a pretty big deal at the time. And finally, iPad was up for consideration, which is a name Apple would come back around to a few years later. Though of course it wouldn't be the pod part they would take from iPod, but the iPod, as the phone was eventually christened the iPhone, to fit in line with their other iProducts. Many movies could have also ended up with different names too. In example, the 1984 classic Ghostbusters. However, this one is a little bit different. Ghostbusters was always the name they had in mind for the film, but there was a panic that they would not be able to use this name due to a kids TV series from the 70s being called The Ghostbusters. And there's always issues with copyrights when it comes to names like this. So in case this became an issue, the team behind the movie came up with some other names. This includes the likes of Ghost Stoppers, Ghost Blasters, Ghost Breakers, and Ghost Mashers. All of these names give the same idea as Ghostbusters, but don't quite have the same ring to them. They were so worried about not being able to use this name, there's even deleted footage of the other names being used. Ghost, Ghost Stoppers! Thankfully, however, Columbia Pictures, who owned Ghostbusters the film, and Universal, who owned the Ghostbusters TV show, could come to a deal so the name could be used. This deal involved Columbia paying Universal's $500,000 and 1% of the film's profits to Universal, which is a lot of money, but evidently worth it to creators of the film so they could use that name. I wonder if Universal still gets 1% of the profit from future films as well. We all seem to know the story of how Facebook was originally called The Facebook, before The The was dropped from the title, but the other hugely popular social media website Twitter actually went through a much more radical naming history. The co-founder of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, spoke about the origin of the name in an interview once. He said, We wanted a name that evokes what we did. We wanted something that was tangible. And we looked at what we were doing, and when you received a tweet over SMS, your phone would buzz. It would jitter. It would twitch. And those were the early names, Jitter and Twitch. And neither one of them really inspired the best sort of imagery. So the team went on to look for a name in the vein of Jitter and Twitch, but didn't have a connotation of addiction like Jitter and Twitch do in regards to certain narcotic addictions. Twitch seemed to be the more standout name to them, as they continued looking through dictionaries for words starting with TW, and from here they found Twitter. In the same interview, Dorsey said, Twitter means a short, inconsequential burst of information, chirps from a bird, and we were like, that describes exactly what we're doing here, so it was an easy choice. So from here, Jitter and Twitch were put aside and Twitter was used instead. Though, funnily enough, another immensely popular site would come around and be called Twitch, and despite Twitter not using these names due to the connotations of addiction, Twitter has become an addiction to many in of itself. Which reminds me, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at NameExplainYT. Do I post extra etymological facts there? Well, no. But if you want not Monsters and my wrestling opinions and that's the place to go. It seems Woolworths is a name that has been used for multiple different supermarkets around the world, some more connected than others. Depending on where you are in the world may bring up a different concept of Woolworths. There are slash were Woolworths in the US, UK and South Africa. However, the Woolworths we are interested in today is the supermarket chain in Australia that goes by this name. Initially, however, these stores were going to be called Christmas, of all things. Though this wasn't in honour of the December holiday, but because the store's founder was named Percy Christmas. And and many stores are named after their founder. Percy's first shop sold just clothing, however as it was so popular he decided to sell more than just clothes and expand to sell other bits and pieces too, and for this bigger store he wanted a new name. His store reminded him of the Woolworth stores in the USA which sold a variety of things. He also noticed that the American Woolworths had not been trademarked in Australia or New Zealand, so Percy Christmas took the risk and claimed the name for himself in Australia, and while the US Woolworths is no longer around, the Australian Woolworths is still going strong. Though personally I think Christmas Shop is a far more exciting name, though maybe that's just because I love the season. Something else I love is the Beatles, and I have so many Beatle based ideas for videos to make in the future, from explaining the many names the band formerly went as, to talking about the names used in their songs like Eleanor Rigby. For now however, I'll just talk about one of their albums. Revolver is thought to perhaps be their greatest album, however this name was not always going to be used for it. Some other rather puzzling names are almost used, including Beatles on Safari, Four Sides of the Eternal Triangle was suggested by John Lennon, and Ringo suggested After Geography, which was a pun slash response to the recently released Rolling Stones album, Aftermath. The leading contender was apparently Abracadabra, however apparently this name was being used elsewhere, so they settled on a revolver, which of course brings them on a type of gun at first, but the album wasn't named after the firearm, it was a pun on the fact that vinyl albums revolve on the record player. The album was quite literally a revolver, from a classic album to a classic book. The Great Gatsby is a name that will either bring joy or stress to you depending if you were forced to study at school or not. Before settling on this name, author F. Scott Fitzgerald thought about naming his classic Trimalchio and West Egg, a 
among ash heaps of millionaires on the road to West Egg under the red, white and blue, gold-hatted Gatsby and the high bouncing lover just weeks before publication even asked if the title could be changed to under the red, white and blue but was talked out of it due to the delay in publication it would cause. The more simple title of The Great Gatsby was obviously chosen, and Fitzgerald reflected on that title. He said it was okay and explained that The Great Gatsby is weak because there's no emphasis even ironically on his greatness or lack of it. However, I'm sure he wasn't thinking about the millions of school children who'd have to ponder Gatsby's greatness for years to come. Even the internet's most popular website Google wasn't always destined to be called that. In fact, Google had a truly awful name to begin with. When work first began on the search engine, its creators Larry Page and Sir Sergey Brin called it Backrub because their search engine searched through backlinks on the internet. Thankfully, however, they realized that his name wasn't really fit for a search engine. Instead, they found inspiration from the number of Google, which is a one followed by 100 zeros. This massive number evoked the massive amount of search results their engine could provide, so the name was adapted to Google and used. What I love most about this is how Google has changed into a verb too. So in this alternative timeline, Backrub would have become a verb too. Want to know the answer to a question? Give it a back rub, or do you want to find out more about an actor you like? We'll simply back rub the actor later. Finally, I want to talk about Pepsi, the eternal silver medalist in the soft drink world. This name comes from the word Dice Pepsia, which means indigestion, as its creator truly believed that his drink was more than just a sweet treat, but could actually help with digestion too. This aforementioned creator was called Caleb Bradham, and initially he didn't actually call it Pepsi, but instead named it after himself, with it being called Brad's drink. Though of course this name would eventually be replaced with Pepsi. Now this is actually kind of breaking the rules I laid out at the start of this video as it was officially called Brad's drink for some time. I just really like the idea of one of the world's most popular drinks simply being called Brad. Anyway, that's more than enough rejected names. There's just something I love about these etymological what-ifs. Let me know down below about some other reject names of things that I didn't talk about here. Now if you don't mind me, I'm going to go over can of Brad and check Jitter on my tripod. Something that's probably never changed however is your dad's wallet. I bet he's using the same old worn leather wallet full of junk that he's been using for the last 20 years. Well with Father's Day coming up why not treat your dad to a brand new wallet from The Rich who have very kindly sponsored today's video. Their wallets are sleek, minimalist, metal and come in a huge variety of designs and colours. When I first saw these wallets I couldn't figure out how I could ever replace my traditional wallet but after using one for about a year now I can never imagine going back. They were even kind enough to send me a new black titanium wallet wallet and it's just beautiful. It's great design is not only nice to look at but means I only carry around with me what I need and no extra junk. They easily hold every card you'll need and even some cash thanks to the strap on the back. A Ridge wallet would be the perfect gift for your dad this Father's Day and you can get 10% off your order plus free worldwide shipping and returns by visiting ridge.com slash nameexplain which will be linked down below and by using the code nameexplain. So why not treat your dad or even yourself to the last wallet you'll ever need. Once again that's ridge.com slash nameexplain and code name explain. Thank you once again to The Ridge for sponsoring today's video. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just a small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name Gabriel me so I know you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.